can give you some good end reward gear, but those are kind of the better ones I can think of. Now, the other thing too for some easy farming, I guess you could call it, for getting some nice items are campaigns. Uh, I don't, there's not too many of the original campaigns that give you really good stuff. Glitterhelm Cavern is still good at lower levels, though, for farming a lot of things. You can get some reasonable stat items from beating this map, but more importantly, it's one of the best maps for gaining experience on when you're at lower levels because it's so easy to beat. So Glitterhelm Cavern's really good map to uh, play at lower levels and get some experience. Uh, and then King's Game is probably the next best, the next step is uh, the King's Game. King's Game is probably the next best in terms of the lowest stats requirements for good items. King's Game you can do with relatively low stats, you know, less than 1,000, and you can get some really awesome end of map rewards from King's Game. And so, but I feel like it's been overplayed, so I'm gonna not play it for you guys. Tavern Defense, another overplayed map, oh my god. You can get some reasonably good pets from Tavern Defense at the end, but most importantly, you get uh, a lot of experience. It's the highest experience map if you put on Nightmare Hardcore and play the campaign. Uh, I would just suggest skipping the bosses. Once you, once you finish that 13th wave, just restart, and you're gonna get the fastest experience. You can fight the bosses if you do want to get the rewards, but usually the rewards are pretty subpar, so I don't suggest too often. Now, there's a couple other options. Tavern Defense is used heavily for leveling now, so the other option, you can turn on pure strategy. You earn a lot less experience, but the map is ridiculously easy. <laughs> Or you can go survival mode, once again you are in less experience, but more than pure strategy, but the map's harder. But on the flip side, the good thing about survival mode is if you beat wave 35 of survival, you get a special pet called a kobold on a treadmill, and it can potentially have up to 600 in every single stat. So you can get one that has 600 points. And it's quite fast to complete compared to uh, the alternative place to farm tower pets, which is Winter Wonderland, which is a much harder map. And we'll skip that for now. Now the next thing is Akti Jungle. This map is amazing for farming pretty much everything. I'm just going to throw it on Insane Hardcore, just show you what it's like. Uh, the biggest problem is going to be beating the bosses though, for most people. So, uh, we're going to start off with just a random build. I have really high stats, so once again, <laughs> don't, don't take my build as gold for you guys if you're playing with a lot lower stats, as it's not. <laughs> There are definitely many options for builds though, so... Oh, come on! Really? Dark energy, you bastard. Okay, whatever, I'll move all my ores then. Six. Let's move them over here, actually, six. Ores are so much bigger on Insane, so I'm not used to... I don't often plan properly for that. Oh, turtles down here. So notice there's turtles on the map that I'm petting. Uh, those turtles are important for making sure that you get the... Come on. Six, seven, nine. Turtles are important for making sure that you get uh, all the mana on the map. So knowing where they are so you can pet them. And there's another turtle. Okay, six, seven, eight, if you're wondering why I put a healing ore there, that's going to be for the bosses. So here's another turtle, ah, ah. and the last chest, so there's four turtles to find on the map, and then there are some chests, chests, I think there's five, could be wrong, and yeah. And chests you see on the map though, so I'm not too worried about getting that number exactly right. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go build ourselves a buff beam there, and this is gonna protect from choppers, is the idea here. Oops. Because choppers come from there, and also choppers well no, the other choppers will be taken out by something else, so I'm not worried. We're going to build ourselves. Ah, I can't see. I hate the trees on this map. A four. 
the size and we're gonna build ourselves oh no that's not gonna work I need to definitely see where this one's going a little bit better okay we're gonna build ourselves a reflect beam there because there are choppers once again to deal with and last thing we're gonna do here is build nice nice and this area has choppers so um, Oh no, I'll do it like this. So it'll, that'll protect us a little bit from the choppers there. And then, oh man, this area is really annoying to get right. Whatever. So I'll just fuck it up anyways. Um, I forget how to build this area. I think what I do is I think I build just minions on this. Eight. There we go. Let's build a reflect there. And build a reflect here for choppers. Four choppers. Okay, I totally did something wrong. Oh well. I thought I was supposed to be able to afford two harpoons, but apparently I can only afford one. Odd. Really odd. Okay, the important thing to note is we're gonna have the harpoon so it can aggro any ogres that come walking up those steps. Uh, that's important. That is so weird. I totally thought with this build I could get a second harpoon. Huh. If I took away the healing aura, no, that wouldn't do it. If I took away the healing aura and one reflect, that would do it. Oh, sigh. Oh well. Oh well. So we got all of our main points covered. There won't be any ogres on this first wave. Uh, if you're playing on insane, there's no gins, so you don't have to worry about gas traps. But there will be shark, if I remember correctly. But then again, I might not remember correctly, so don't take my word for everything. <laughs> and let's go and upgrade you twice. Not too much, I don't want my ore to be too huge. Ha ha ha, knockback. You get slaughtered by my knockback. Okay, this one I feel like making as big as possible, so I will. Okay, now we're just going to do a whole bunch of minion summoning. Of course, there are a lot of build options out there, so always find the build that works best for you and your stats and your DPS. Uh, swap hero to um, minion summoner. There we go. Couldn't think straight for a second there. Okay, so the main thing is we're going to want to have a mage at all of the points if possible because what the mage will allow us to do is leave the place kind of un uh, unattended so that you know it can take a beating without us being there and heal itself so and then of course a couple of archers to get that nice range dps and a spider on the ogre heavy spots so that we can deal with the um okay so this buff beam was a waste the way i built it because i can't fit a harpoon there that was that was the plan so anyways, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to build the mage further back then. And then maybe it won't take ogre damage while still being able to heal. Okay. Oh, why did I just do that? Erg. So hard to see. Oh no, I'm going to be stuck on a builder. Oh well. It's not the end of the world with uh, this map. Okay, as you can see, we actually have a little bit of extra DU left. I'm not sure the best place to put it. Actually, I don't need a spider here. There's so few. Oh no, there's lots of ogres that come here because of the chopper ogres, right? So I think what I'll do is I'll probably try putting the extra DU or MU here. I think that's. Oh no, there's no chopper ogres because we're on insane, right? It's just regular ogres. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, whatever. I'll put it here then. Wait, what am I thinking? No, that's not where I want it. I'll put it here. Nice, this is where I want it. I finally decided where I want it. <laughs> oh my. Oh, it's getting late, guys. I'm avoiding doing homework by playing games. This is really bad. As I will keep repeating over and over and over again. Probably. So... 
As you can see, mobs do take some aura damage as they walk through this area from the aura up there. And then they also have to take ore damage through here. This should keep any trash mob from being able to get to your crystal. So all you have to do is aggro the ogre. And that's what this harpoon is for, is to aggro the ogre. It's its only job. And of course it can shoot this ogre if needed. And then these minions block anything from that path or the bridge being able to get to your crystal. And then also this blocks the other path from there, the ogre choppers, and from here. So this one only has block from the one direction and then over here we have these guys block the ogres that come from here the aura deals with most trash mob and there's ogre choppers that come from back here but most of them will get stuck on the crystal and just because they'll be going for your towers they might hit my maids the way i built this but usually they'll just like uh, and they can't hurt your crystal so you don't actually need to block them and then here we're blocking the remaining path for regular ogres to go in we've only left the one path open but we've relied on a harpoon to aggro those enemies. Okay. I don't know any good way to simulate the boss fight for lower levels, to be honest. Just only know how to use my OP character, it's kind of sad. I don't have like anything in between. I guess I could like take a sword off my barbarian? I don't even know if that would do it. I might have like a spare weapon laying around for my barbarian to simulate a lower end boss fight. Anyways, Akatiti can be farmed for so many good things. If you have a four player split screen, uh, definitely that's going to give you some awesome, awesome farming opportunities. If you farm four player Akatiti, you on Nightmare, you're guaranteed to get 600 million mana a run with four players. Well, not guaranteed, but you pretty much are, and you have the chance of getting an item that's worth a lot more. So definitely, Akhidi is kind of the go-to ultimate farming map once you're at a slightly higher level of play and can do Nightmare by yourself. Uh, but yeah, with four players, as I said, you get the 600 million mana, which is amazing. Uh, and then you also get uh, some really nice weapons. The way you get the 600 million mana is all of the end of wave rewards, the majority of them are really expensive mana value. So you get a whole bunch, there's a whole bunch that have really nice cost and you can make a lot of money off of them by dropping them on the ground and then letting them auto sell at the end. But what you do is you bring in four, you're going to be bringing in four heroes for the last wave, for the final wave. So during the boss fight, if you've got the good DPS, of course you can also do three, because on this map, three players is three players exponentially easier than four players, and of course one player even more so easy, but two players is a bit easier. But yeah, definitely easiest, easiest way to do this map is not with four players. <laughs> so if you're having trouble, cut the number of players by one, try again. Um, yeah. So anyways, you add all of the players, however many you can handle for the final wave. You go, you kill the boss, blah 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 blah, you get some nice stuff, and most importantly, you, uh, you're you going to get a whole crap ton of rewards. And what you're going to do is don't have any of your players leave the game, any of your alts, have them all stay in the game, and then, yeah, shark can do spawn, I thought so. You're going to have them stay, all stay in the game, you're going to drop anything that's not worth selling for more money in your AFK shop, and you're going to sell you know, you're going to drop pretty much anything that kind of seems like crap. And then from there, what you can do is... Uh, from there, you can uh, return to Tavern. And what it, this map... I don't know if all maps do this, or just this map. But when you return to Tavern on, on the very last wave, it gives every single player in the game the full sell value. So whatever, normally at the end of a wave, if there's like... 200 million mana worth of loot sold usually gets split equally between all players but on in this case when you're returning to tavern after the boss fight each player gets that full 200 million so you dropped a whole bunch of items and then the end of wave sell is suddenly worth 200 million or 150 and times that by four and you got your 600 million mana sweet but yeah you can easily farm items that are worth way more than that if you sell them to other players so it's kind of usually what most people you do with rewards off this map so they try and find stuff they can sell for more to other players. Nice. 
I like the way I kill that ogre with the right click ability, which does like no DPS. So I could fight the boss right click only. Oh my god, that'd be brutally annoying. Um, there's a link on the forums. Go into uh, the go into the PC and console guide section and look at the stickies at the very top and there'll be a sticky called links to guides and there's a link in there to one of the emulator programs. It's not. I know there's a better post somewhere that has like that exact same emulator program but it has like some custom scripts installed to uh, to like set it up for you a little bit easier but eh, it makes some changes I don't like so I don't link to it. Like just your controls and stuff. So. Of course, you can use any kind of controller as well uh, to emulate or to play with extra characters. I do have one Xbox controller plugged in currently, so I can easily bring in a second player just with that alone. But I would have to plug in more controllers if I wanted to use that method, so that's where the emulator comes in handy. You don't actually have to buy any physical, extra physical hardware then. Oh, where are all the enemies? Am I killing them that fast? That's that's kind of sad. I didn't mean to kill you. I just meant to keep you away. I never meant to hurt you. I just wanted you to see my love. So yeah. ActGD by far the best all-in-one farming map you can possibly do in the game in my opinion. <laughs> and if you're having trouble with the map, just knock down the player count, and it should get exponentially easier. Then again, Insane isn't too bad. Insane is definitely a lot easier, and you still get decent rewards, at least that's what we're going for. Um, you know, that's why I'm doing Insane, is so I can show you guys that the rewards aren't that bad. If you're at, if you can beat the boss, so it's a problem. It can be really hard. If you just get one good DPS in your game, the boss will go down like nothing. But if you don't have any good TPS in your game, well, uh, yeah, good luck with that. He's definitely not the easiest boss to kill without good DPS. And for some reason they make the boss wave spawn a lot of enemies compared to other boss waves, so it actually seems very hard because you don't have your heroes DPS and holding the line with the towers like usual. Oh, I hate these slow ogres. Oh well, one left. Oh no, I'm gonna hit slow time, so I'll cancel that. Damn it, I wanted to heal all, so I didn't have to go around repairing anything. Oh well. Once again, not upgrading that one, just because I don't want my ores to be so huge with it being insane. If you were playing, I would definitely suggest upgrade it, though. I'm just, I just have such good stats, I know I don't need to. Okay, there's that ogre. He will die to the minions. Or I'll come by and kill him too. I don't know. One of the two happened. Uh, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just see if I can get some crappy swords on my barb to emulate a lower level boss fight. Uh, item box, active sets. That's a nice one. That's not a crappy one. Okay, uh, I can't even give it to my hero because it requires level 100. Oh well. Let's see if there's anything I can just pick up then in game. <laughs> or take one of them off completely and see how that goes. I'll do that right now. I'll take one off and see how that goes. Uh, item box. Okay. We'll see. We'll see if I'm still OP or not. Yep, still OP. I just don't use Hawk Stance then. I don't know. Like, take off the prop cat too, that would make a nice difference. Oh, actually, you know what I can do? Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. I should do more, less deep. Hey, hey. Okay, I seem to be doing more DPS with um, just the left click instead of both. I don't know, it's so hard to tell. Definitely take off the prop cap though. Although I don't think I don't think there's any way I can't be OP with a sword like this. Like honestly, you can have like a 15,000 attack sword and still be OP on insane. 
Okay, there we go. That's that's making me a bit weaker. Still not as weak as I'd like, but let's see how good is this one? No, it's not mythical. It'd have to be mythical for me to go for it, and I don't see any myths dropping. Oh man, Gladius is just so OP. Anyways, I've made myself as weak as possible for now, because I don't have any like my other swords left over. Yeah, I'm not seeing any myths out of all those greens. No, 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 mythical. Which I'm not surprised about. Oh, tornado that shit. Whee! Super jump height. Okay. Yoi, where's this last boss gonna spawn? Let's just keep the map open because I want to kill him as fast as possible. There he comes. Let's get some tornado to get down there. Okay, he's dead now. Alright, I still haven't tested out fully if just one hand has lower or higher DPS. So we'll see. It probably has higher, is my guess. Eh, it's really similar. Which kind of makes me think, yeah. I don't know though, it's so hard to say for certain. Especially when the ogres have already taken some form of damage from the aura or, you know, whatever else it may be. Ah, man, that's so similar. It just sounds funny. These things sound funny when they hit enemies. Just like... Okay, let's test out on this ogre now what, what it's like to use. Ah, it's so similar. I, I kind of feel like it's slightly less with both, but it's so hard to tell. Might not be though. Might not be. No, it's definitely less with two. It might just because it might be like the same amount with just less attack speed, but either way it definitely feels like less as a result. So I'll use both for the boss fight and no hawk stands. All oh, right, my seven is my repair, not my four. If you look at my hotkeys, you can see that I've completely customized my hotkeys for Barbarian. Not completely, because a couple are the same. Upgrade tower and heal is in the same spot. Uh... Okay, if you guys didn't know how to hotkey, what you can do is you can find the ability you want to hotkey and then hold that key down on the keyboard and it'll swap the hotkey to there. So, I put I put the hotkeys on based on how I think I'd want to use them. I couldn't change upgrade though, I had to leave upgrade in the same spot, I was like I know I'll confuse myself too much. Okay, I'm going to add in an alt for the boss for no reason other than because I can and get an extra reward and see how good it is and make the boss just a tiny bit harder I guess not that he's gonna be hard but we'll see poor Jester getting hit by the odd ogre club Okay, as you can see that harpoon is doing its job to aggro the ogre. What a genius build. I don't know if this build would work with the four players though on Nightmare. Because it works on Nightmare, but I just don't see it working with four players at all, ever. 
This is my favorite part, is when there's like this swarm of enemies that you can just like run through and slice. I love that about this map. Just enemies, enemies, enemies! Well, for, the, for those run-throughs, I should really just be using my left click only. Uh, uh, now that I think about it. Just look at that attack speed. Okay, they're like all dead, but whatever. Oh no, they're not all dead yet, but... Pretty close. Yeah, there we go. Sweet, almost done with this. Kill the birds. It's a little bit quicker than letting them get to the tower. Okay. Gosh, I love tornado stance. It's so much fun. It's like the best part about being a barb. If it wasn't for tornado stance, I probably wouldn't like barbarian at all. I would prefer Squire over Barbarian if I didn't have Tornado Stance on a Barb, is what I'm trying to say. Ba, 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 ba. Oh yeah, baby. So now notice, on Insane, my ores of course are much bigger than on Nightmare. But basically you're going to be fighting the boss right around here, so you're well within all of your auras. So you get your healing, you get your strength drain. And of course you get the lightning and ensnare to help keep choppers and other enemies off your back while you fight. Nice. Okay. Well it's interesting how long you can keep Hawk up for. Nice. And it is a golden goblin mech. A goblin mech really really can be annoying with four players he has a massive amount of hp when he starts a rocket barrage it deals a ton of damage if he's not in a strength train or if you just don't have great resistances he'll deal a ton of damage period of course the weakness to a goblin mech is the back door when it's open same as on the throne room but this one is just a lot stronger so what we're going to do is we're going to try and avoid his rocket attacks until that back door opens avoid any major, you know. Okay, back door's open. I'm gonna want to try and jump up there to make sure I'm hitting it. Uh, it's too close, so I kept getting stuck. And there we go. He takes way more damage than the back door open. I'm still way too OP for insane. But, as you can see, if you have a good DPS, that boss fight goes extremely smooth and extremely fast. Now, let's give my items back to my guy before I forget and accidentally drop one or sell it. Wait, where's this sword? Oh no. Oh, it's an Eternia sword, right? Oh, phew. Okay, so what do we get here? First thing we get is a pet. You can get some decent pets. This one is mythical capped. Mm, it's gonna be okay, but you know, it has no upgrade, so it can't get the number of towers up anymore. So it's kind of useless other than having some okay tower stats. So you can either keep that, sell it, or drop it on the ground for the auto loot. Now look at this clava, oh my god, 367 ups, it's an ultimate, and I got this off insane hardcore, it's got reasonably, not great, but reasonably nice tower stats, uh, nothing compared to Nightmare, but with this many ups, these are actually a pretty good DPS, sadly it has negative charge speed, so you're going to want to upgrade the charge speed bonus to get it positive, that's going to kill like 40 upgrades or 60, I don't know. But still, this can get some very nice damage. And it has okay, not great, but okay hero stats. So that's worth keeping. That's wow. And of course, you get a bunch of other random items as well, which you may or may not like. I usually don't like them, <laughs> but I'm at high stats, so it could be potentially good for someone else. And the other obsidian weapon I get is a Sparus. Now, this one actually has pretty nice tower stats, since it doesn't have enough ups to be used as a good DPS weapon. Uh, it's definitely, you know, this, once again, it's just insane hardcore. Uh, this is not Nightmare, so... But the boss can be really hard to DPS down, that's the only hard part about this map. But then again, if you just do it with two or three people, it's massively easier than four. So, yeah, that's a reasonable weapon. 
And then, of course, we got a couple. You get so many rewards per person. And you get some armor as well. I'm not sure which armor is actually from this map, since I have so much now. Oh, that's a piece of crap, so it's getting dropped. And this one is not really that good. So I'll drop it. This one, eh. Eh. I don't like it too much. Negative tower attack. Like, you could have had negative anything but tower attack. No, negative tower attack. I don't know how armored knows to do that. It knows to troll you. <laughs> so annoying. Okay, that godly I probably got from here. This mythical. Eh, it's actually no. Oh no, it's got no upgrades. It sucks for DPS. And that godly sucks. But more importantly, we get accessories that can sometimes be really good from this map. This time I got crappy accessories, but people can get mythical and I think even transcendent accessories from playing on insane. So you can get some ones that have like, you know, 50, 60 stat points and you collect a set of those, like already look at this one. I get 38 hero attack there, plus 27. Hmm, that's kind of nice. It's like another 60 hero. Oh, no, no, 65. It's another 65 hero attack and then I also get another 30 health and I get like... Yeah, 53 casting raid. I get some of ability 1. I get ability 2. So as you can see, not bad. And that is farming Akatiti. And if you look at my mana right now, it's 476. I'm going to see how much I get. I'll probably get... I might get enough to put... I probably won't sell that much because Nightmare is where you get most mana, not insane. But yeah, I got... Whoa, did I just get a hundred million, like, almost exact? That's insane. But it just turned out to such a round number. <laughs> oh, 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 no, that's crappy. Anyways, so there you go. That's kind of a run-through of a bunch of different farming options in Dungeon Defenders. Um, I didn't touch, I didn't touch the bulk of farming, like, the grinding the really really heavy grinding of survival and I still got a few more maps to touch on but basically what I did showed you guys I'm just gonna do a recap for those players who weren't around the whole time or forget did a recap of some of the challenges that are reasonably good for farming because uh, challenges are a lot easier usually than you know survival farming so some of the challenges can get you some nice items sky oh not sky of love temple of love you know is a good option for some accessories but only for the head slot and apparently some people have found some good pets off there I don't know there's some other stuff but Temple of Love on Insane Hardcore a reasonably good option uh, for farming and then of course Boss Rush for the classic eagles but Boss Rush can be a really hard map to farm um, but if you're this is more late game that you'd want to farm Boss Rush uh, let's see course um, wherever Halloween Spooktacular 2 was you can sometimes get good items mainly accessories but it's not the best I went through the three ch assault challenges because it's only six minutes to do all three you get a unicorn well maybe it takes a bit longer than six but no it takes about six minutes and you get a unicorn which can be a pretty good DPS pet if you can't farm seahorses yet and you get a bit of mana and three unique items uh, and then we did, and then I talked about how Warping Core Challenge Packs, you can get Zamria Armor, which can be good. Uh, the original challenges, you have to complete all these on Nightmare Hardcore, I think, to get your key, Companion Cube, which is worth a ton of money. But you only get one ever, so keep that in mind. Don't keep doing it, hoping you get more than one. <laughs> and of course we did Oasis Monster Fest, where I was able to farm about 500 million mana in just one map run using two players in and there's some reasonable armor you can find then for campaign we talked about uh, end of re you know rewards clear home caverns good for the end of campaign rewards when you have low stats it's also really great for leveling up an experience and then moving on from there uh, king's game is the next best place to get awesome weapon rewards or item rewards at the end of the map and you can do it with reasonably low uh, stats you know a bit higher obviously than glitter but reasonably low and then tavern defense is your ultimate place to farm uh, to farm experience there's a lot of options and then of course wave 35 of survival you get an awesome pet that can have potential for 600 in every stat so really great for tower stats um, 
And then Akatiti Jungle, the end all be all best place to farm ever for pretty much everything. <laughs> you get amazing damage and tower weapons for a staff, apprentice staff. You get a monk weapon and you get a squire weapon and they're all amazing all amazing as well as you can find amazing armor from here you can get good pets from here uh, you can get quite a bit of mana from here so it's pretty much got a bit of everything survival is pretty useless unless you want to farm high-end monkeys but I won't go into that and then lastly before we go on to attorney of shards if you have them is winter wonderland what winter wonderland is good for is mana farming you farm this you get your coal if you're doing it on nightmare and suddenly you have something that's worth a ton of mana for people. It sometimes can give good rewards for item wise, but meh. And then of course the last thing that it's awesome for is accessories. It gives you really high stats accessories, kind of like Temple of Love, uh, better than Akatiti. So, uh, but it can be a troll this map, extremely annoying and hard to farm. So that's more for end game players or high end players to farm Winter Wonderland on Nightmare. But on Insane, you can still get reasonable accessories. Okay, moving on to the shards. Not too much to get from Misty, other than just general good armor. Uh, Misty Mire, once you beat it and you start doing survival, you know, as soon as you can have the stats to do reasonably well on Misty Mire, like wave 20, you're going to be laughing. So Misty Mire is a great place to farm survival for general stuff. But we're going to skip survival farming for now. Uh, Mirago similar idea to Misty. It's really not that much great. Uh, not really. I don't think there's anything that amazing from this map from the campaign. Uh, Aquinos, yeah, yeah, not too much amazing. The weapons are okay, but not amazing. Then you get into Sky City, and Sky City changes the game yet again. Uh, this one has a boss that's quite a bit harder than the... Um, you know quite a bit harder than a lot because you have to jump on and off this airship without falling off the map but sky city rewards you some awesome weapons at the end of the map that's the main thing you want here they've got one for each hero class the monk wrench can have really good stats in addition to being awesome melee dps the huntress critical striker very very powerful gun if you find a good one uh, the steam saw for the squire of barbarian reaches extremely high attack damage but it does have a slower swing speed so usually people go for the gladius over this and if you want ranged for your monk you're going to go for the obsidian spar saw off actiti instead of course the gladius for the squire being from actiti as well they go for it over the steam saw but steam saw is still a very good option for as a sword uh, and then last but not least for our beloved hunt no who am i missing apprentice yeah apprentice gets a cool looking staff i don't know if it's actually any good for damage but it can get really good stats too so that's sky city farm this gets the end beat the boss get some nice weapons okay uh we're gonna skip now uh that's all of like the campaign farming options so those are the nice kind of easier ways to transition and progress but sometimes when you're trying to outfit five characters with building armor or whatever, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to have to do